good afternoon assalamu alaikum uh, today i want to present my work uh, dissertation work uh, and my subject is about arabic text arabic text classification using artificial neural network uh, just my subject is about Arabic text classification using artificial neural network. Uh, I will discuss in this presentation uh, introduction about text classification and the problem statement and objective related work and the proposed system and result and the conclusion and the future work that will be. Okay. First of all, text classification is the task to determine the category of any classified text document automatically based on a predefined set of categories. We have a set of categories, we have a set of documents. Here in text classification, we have, for example, five categories, and these documents will be classified based on these categories predefined. It's uh, this subject, text classification, it's a subject that combines with machine learning where we will apply our classifiers on the text data, Arabic text data, to predict the final result or the classes or the categories of these documents. Information retrieval, we have to process these data and extract the features and the terms or the words from the documents and they presented to the machine learning classifier. NLP, natural language processing, we have to use some techniques from natural language processing like for Arabic, my subject is Arabic for documents here. We have, for example, to process Arabic data in some manner to present them to the classifier. The, for example, Arabic content has some morphological syntax and sentences that are different from other languages. So it needs some pre-processing techniques, techniques that need to be applied. Uh, this method or, uh, that will be used, it's using, uh, uh, using artificial neural networks is a supervised learning approach for, classify, for classifying text. Uh, means uh, what I mean that text classification it's a supervised me learning approach that being used. Uh, text classification has many applications like document classification, spam filtering, and sentiment analysis. Another thing that I have to mention that Arabic language is very popular language is one of the top widely used languages in the world spoken by by more than 400 million people in 25 countries. So this is the importance of applying Arabic language for text classification. There were, the problem statement for my work is just there are many, this is all based on the related work, just I will mention later on, uh, many research studies for English text classification, but there are little done for Arabic language. Another thing is that data pre-processing is a challenging ta task for Arabic language due to the complexity of the language itself and the availability of tools for, required for pre-processing Arabic documents. Another thing that feature engineering is an important stage for the performance of the classifier means we have to after pre-processing, which is after pre-processing data, we have to analyze these feature Arabic features and apply relevant techniques for them. Another aspect that even we need to mention that even little little work done for neural network in Arabic TC. Few papers I which is my, based on my research few papers that apply neural network for Arabic text classification. Doesn't maybe exceed five papers if it's not a three, as I remember. Uh, my objective for this research is to select the appropriate pre-processing techniques for Arabic text and to select the features and its representation using relevant scheme 
another thing is to select to implement artificial neural network classifier with the appropriate architecture and finally to compare the accuracy of this classifier implemented in the that stage with other classifiers that common for Arabic classification and used in many literature uh, there is a related that one the objective and uh, related work is based on this related work I which is investigated the related work I saw there are different algorithm used for Arabic text classifications such as naive base support vector machines decision trees low re, um, logistic regressions a lot and there are even variation of these techniques for example here there is multinomial naive base there is Gaussian naive base so many algorithms apply for Arabic text classification uh, even from my study for the literature that there are researcher use multiple methods for feature selection such as chi square mutual information information Again, all this has been applied. So on my research is to apply one of them the best of that being presented in the current literature. And another thing that pre-processing from the literature, all the studies has applied pre-processing stage because it's very important for Arabic text to clean the data and present it in a well-formatted way to be used by the classifier. And even light steamers is used. Light steamers is used. This is a part of even pre-processing. Light steamers is used frequently for pre-processing Arabic text. And there are even other researchers that used root steamers. When when uh, when I mean light steamers here for Arabic, there are different way of uh, of uh, extracting the word in some pattern. I will discuss it maybe in a later stage. Neural network even, as I told you before, that it's rarely used in Arabic text classification. And even when it's used there, I saw few papers, it has very poor results in terms of accuracy. So I go through that one to see what I can do for that. Okay, the research methodology, methodology that I have followed in my research that first of all data collection and Arabic text pre-processing then and then feature engineering which consists even of feature selection representation and feature re reduction methods and then applying the artificial neural network classifier implemented in different ways and then evaluate that classifier based on different architecture and finally, compare the model extracted for artificial neural network with other classifiers that come in, in Arabic text classification. Uh, first of all, I have to collect the data set that I have to apply my which is meant to apply to my research. Uh, choosing an Arabic data set is a very difficult task because in English literature there are a lot of standard benchmark data set but for Arabic unfortunately there is no such things so some researchers which is may use in-house prepared data set collected some of them they use extraction method to, from website to gather these data sets and from my side I see one of the data sets that applied by different researchers so at least I can compare with other researcher results so I use that when I have um, collected at least four data sets for Arabic, but I choose this data set based on different metrics. First, it has multiple categories, for example, five categories, which is a good, which is my number for categorizing text. It has a balanced number of documents here. Means there is, for example, for art, we will categorize the documents in different classes here, art, economic, politics, science, sport, the number of documents for each class is balanced. That will get accurate results when we apply the classifier and measure the accuracy for that classifier. Uh, the data set is Al Jazeera Arabic News data set with 
1,500 documents with five classes and more than one, uh, 15,000 words. Uh, total, uh, I have even applied a split ratio for training testing data set, which is 80-20 for training and testing, and used even cross-validation with five faults. Means cross-validation here, for example, when I say I split my data set to 80-20, it's uh, before that, this 20 for the testing and 80 for the training. Now, in the first fold, for example, the data set will be two parts. The first part, is, for example, 80, the second part, 20. The second fold, that 20 will be maybe the first part and the 80 will be second. It will be in five folds and all these results will get, uh, which is my accuracy from these five folds. Here, another after collecting the data set and prepare it and reprocess it or read it in the, into the program, we have different uh, which is my techniques or reprocessing step that we have applied to this data set. What these are for Arabic, especially, there is different mechanism. For, uh, for uh, the first step is filtering. For example, removing digits, removing diatric. Tamma, Fatha, Kasra in Arabic text, we have to remove them before pre-process, before applying the features to, to the classifier. Even removing the pen questions from the sentences. And even removing non-Arabic words. All these applied, of course, in Python with specific module I have prepared to fill you these steps. Uh, the second step is even for Arabic language for uh, normalization. Normalization in English language, we convert, for example, capital letters, words to small letters. So in later on, later stages, it will be one word, not two words, for example. Uh, cat in capital will be one feature and cat in small letter, different feature. Here normalization, it will normalize the word in a specific format so we can combine them together. Here, for example, for Arabic especially, it's the normalization is in different approach. For example, we have Hamza. Hamza has different forms. Hamza without the, this one, Hamza under the, which is the Aleph. There is different ways of reprocessing Arabic text. Uh, maybe we have to, which is my, there is even in Arabic there is different which is my rules for morphological and grammatical rules which is very interesting and we need to do another which is my presentation about these techniques but I implement them in Python even for that one and that module which is my support Unicode especially for Arabic it's even challenging in Python for this one and the sec third stage tokenization which is converting Arabic text in two tokens, and uh, so we can apply later on the feature selection methods on this text. Means now, after cleaning the data in first step, filtering and normalization, we uh, we which is may divide these which is my words into a vector or into a list of tokens. Even we skip some of the tokens that list than three uh, characters. For Arabic, most of the words is three characters, if it's, um, if it's two characters, these are propositions or other forms of words that not necessary in pre and in, in, in classification. Uh, stop words removal, we apply this one even to remove that, um, some Arabic words that doesn't, which is ma'am. Maybe it reduces the, the accuracy of the classifier. For example, in Arabic, in English we have and, or, or something. But uh, in, a, in, in Arabic, we have even wa, man, min, ila. There are different forms of wishes, no words. And for pre processing, even we have a steamers, uh, these are steamers to convert the word from one, uh, from one form to another form. I use light steamers with convert some of the words to common uh, form. There are root steamers which convert Arabic words, for example, to just the, their uh, basic rule, the dictionary root, uh, which is a three, 
letters. Most of Arabic words are three letters or four or five even. But most of them are three. Uh, later on, we have, which is the next stage, uh, feature engineering. We apply, I apply TFIDF. Uh, TFIDF is a scheming, uh, which is a mechanism that after uh, pre-processing data, we convert them in a vector. There is something called space vector model, which converts the words into a matrix. This matrix, uh, which is my repre this matrix represents a numerical values. For example, we have these tokens from the pre-processing steps. Now we have to convert them to a numerical form. Numerical form using, for example, TFIDF. Why? Because the classifier neural network or any other classifier only understand numerical values. It doesn't understand 612 data. So we have to convert these tokens extracted from the uh, documents into numerical form using, for example, TFIDF. TFIDF simply it's uh, using uh, which is my term frequency and uh, uh, how many words has been which is my, in this document multiplied by how many doc all documents over the, uh, the over the uh, how many documents in the whole corpus over the uh, the number of the words in all documents, that word specifically in that document, and we use the logarithm, which is my function, to scale that one down to multiply it by the term of frequency so we have a proper value to be extracted. Even we have used chi square for feature selection. Feature selection simply that from these steps, we have, for example, 2,000 or 10,000 words. The classifier is, will have a difficult time to process all these ones. So we have to reduce this number of features. So we apply chi square to reduce this number of features by using this formula. It's a st statistical form formula that reduces it, which is the number of terms. Uh, this one even we apply chi squared with uh, some another factor, which is the twenty percent features of the feature extracted in the pre-processing. Not all features will go to the classifiers. Only 20% of the features applied using even the feature selection method with, with chi square, which will use the only important features for the classifier. chi square will apply uh, some method that picking the more significant or important word. Okay, we use even for pre-presentation uh, uh, bag of words. Yeah, let me go. Uh, the development uh, tools that used for the, uh, which is uh, implementing the classifier and comparing a Python programming language using a Visual Studio Code. Even I use different libraries and frameworks for the work, which is, for example, NumPy for dealing with arrays and for scikit-py, even for advanced algorithm and linear algebra and pandas for extracting the data and manipulating it in a, like an Excel sheet. Uh, another part is uh, even for Matplot for presenting the data for analysis and scikit-learn for applying the algorithm, classification algorithm, and NLTK to applying the steamers that I use them in the pre-processing. Here just a screenshot for the app structure, maybe it's not too clear. But on the left side, you see that each file of Python represents a module. For example, the classification, there is a module that has all the code for classification. Data sets for reading the data sets files from the folders. Here we have, for example, parser to parse the data in such a way if, because some of the data needs some parsing. Pre-processing all the five stages of pre-processing. And here the main code file, which will call all these modules into the main program. Uh, the first experiment for the artificial neural network, I applied as, which is, my, you see that multi-layer perception neural network with backup propagation and cross-validation is applied with five parts. Uh, grid search is applied, but here I examine, uh, I test the three architecture settings for the neural network to get the best result. I applied the best in pre-processing and 
teacher engineering. Here, I have applied three. For example, in the first experiment, I have set one hidden layer for the, which is for the architecture. And the second, I have 20 neurons for the hidden layer. And the number of iteration over these neurons is, for example, for the first architecture, 200. Second architecture, I applied, for example, two hidden layers. With, with 50 neurons and 500 iterations. The second architecture for the first experiment, I test one hidden layer with more um, 70 neurons and 500 iterations. Now, the number of input neurons, it depends on the number of features extracted. So, we have 20% of features selected in the previous stage and will come here as an input and will be passed to the hidden layer which has for example in the first architecture which is 20 neurons in the second architecture 15 neurons and the third architecture 70 neurons I even for the neural network I use learning rate which is set to this uh, 0 0.0001 which is unique it needs more power time but it gets uh, very good results. Uh, nobody used this, which is my level of uh, re learning rate in Arabic text classification. Even the activation function uses ReLU, which is rectified linear unit. It's applied if it, the value, for example, for classification less than zero, it will be, which is my, uh, classified as z positive. If it's more than zero, it will be classified as uh, positive. Okay. Here, the first experiment for neural networks with the first architecture, the results that I get, for example, here the evaluation method, there is special evaluation methods for text classification. We have recall, precision, uh, recall, and if feature, which combine precision and recall. And I get these results based on the first experiments. I get an accuracy of 97.2%. Here, for example, for the sport, for the recall, I have got, for example, 100%. And for the, uh, this is for this category, means that I retrieve all the documents for sp sport 100. For the economic, the classification, all documents has got 100% accuracy. Uh, uh, for this first experiment architecture, I have got uh, 97.2. Uh, the second architecture, I get 97 just without the 0.2. Uh, so there is this performance accuracy for this architecture. Uh, here, uh, if you see the red numbers, it's uh, the, in the second architecture, it was less than the previous one. The third architecture, it improved uh, significantly. So I get uh, an accuracy of 97% for the classification here. So all the classes has got um, very good performance in terms of uh, accuracy and measurement. Okay, and for this, for each category, it's distributed for each category. It means that this architecture is the best. If I go to the previous slide here, means the third architecture with one neuron, with 70 neurons, one hidden layer with 70 neurons and 500 iteration get an accurate, which is my uh, best results for me. Uh, these only the final, which is my experiments. I do a lot of experiments, even for, I do a lot of experiments for these ones. For example, even with 1,000, which is 1,000 neurons, but it didn't get much better results. Uh, in the second experiment, I which is my compare the result I get it with the best architecture in the first experiment with another two classifiers used extensively in Arabic text classification, which is naive Bayes and support vector machines with the same pre-processing and feature engineering uh, techniques used for the first one. Here for the accuracy of naive Bayes, it's got even 96.4% for the classification on the same data set 
with the same pre-processing. So it less than the accuracy of neural network. And the, that's it. But even the performance of this one, it's a com comparing with other literature, Arabic literature, is very good and it's on par with them. Even for that, this uh, which is naive based a classifier. So the pre-processing and uh, feature engineering was very good selected. So even this one affected on this other classifier in a good way. And for support vector machine, I get 97.3% for the uh, for the for the result of that one, but it doesn't exceed uh, the neural network. Uh, uh, just my conclusion for that one: uh, ANN has the best classifier. In my experiments, which got 97.5. And this is a very excellent uh, rate when we compare to Arabic literature. And that means that a neural network is very good approach to, uh, to be used for Arabic text classification. Uh, the conclusion based on the experiments conducted, we proved that ANN is very capable classifier for Arabic TC when it's used with appropriate architecture. Second, the obtained accuracy was superior to other classifier as it reached 97.5, which is for the first time in the, is the best accuracy obtained for neural network for Arabic TC. And uh, for future work, uh, I, we planning to improve the Arabic pre-processing techniques by applying a new steaming rules for Arabic language, even we could Examine other neural networks where that's a special type of neural network in deep learning, such as convolutional neural network and recurrent uh, neural network. And even we could develop a new mobile system to apply a classifier for real world application. Thank you.